Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree Law 12 of 2021, adding a new clause 6 to paragraph C of Article 8 of Decree Law 78 of 2006 with respect to insurance against unemployment. The new clause stipulates that the salaries of Bahraini employees who are insured under the social insurance law promulgated by Decree Law 24 of 1976 and working in companies impacted by the repercussions of the coronavirus are registered with the Ministry in accordance with the terms and conditions determined by the Minister shall be paid through the Unemployment Insurance Fund for a period of three months, 100% for the first month and 50% for the second and third months. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree 72 of 2021 appointing Nawal Ibrahim Ahmed al Qatar as Under Secretary for Policies, Strategies and Performance at the Ministry of Education. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree 73 of 2021 appointing Diana Faisal Sahan as Director General of the Bahrain Training Institute, the BTI, at the Ministry of Education with the rank of Assistant Under Secretary. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 74 of 2021 appointing Sheikh Ali bin Salman bin Ali Al Khalifa as Chief Executive Officer of the Administrative and Technical Apparatus of the Future Generations Reserve Fund Council at the Ministry of Finance and National Economy. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree 75 of 2021 appointing Nura Hassan Ibrahim Al Assam as Assistant Under Secretary for Resources and Information and Nawaf Al Sayed Hashim Abdul Latif as Assistant Under Secretary for International Cooperation Affairs at the Ministry of Finance and the National Economy. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of the historical relations between Bahrain and the UK, noting that ties were established over two centuries ago and continue to strengthen with every passing year. He welcomed the opportunity of signing a Bahrain-UK free trade agreement, pointing out that the Kingdom is a key gateway to the Gulf region's dynamic economy. He also pointed out the important role Bahrain and the UK play in maintaining stability and prosperity in the Arabian Gulf and underscored the Kingdom's commitment to close cooperation, pointing out that the UK naval support facility in Bahrain is a key component in efforts to maintain regional security. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of international cooperation in the equitable distribution of vaccines through COVAX as part of the global pandemic response. His Royal Highness and the UK Prime Minister then discussed other matters of shared interest and His Royal Highness thanked the UK Prime Minister for his invitation to the COP26 Climate Summit and future cooperation on green issues. For his part, the UK Prime Minister thanked His Royal Highness for his steadfast support for Bahrain-UK relations at all levels. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Kingdom, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 30 of 2021, appointing the following directors at the Prime Minister's office. Nada Ahmed Ali Hassan Ibrahim, a director of the Projects Directorate. Ahmed Isim Janahi, director of the Media Directorate. And Ali Abdullah Jassim Al Aradi, director of Legal Affairs Directorate. The second article of the edict states that the general director of the cabinet will execute this decision on the date of his issuance and to publish it in the official gazette. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister also issued Edict 31 of 2021 appointing the following directors at the Ministry of Education. Dr Ali Salman Mohsen as Director of the Educational Operations District 1 Directorate. Abdul Karim Ibrahim Mohammed as the Director of the Educational Operations District 2 Directorate. Fatima Shaheen al as the Director of Educational Operations District 3 Directorate. Ibrahim Ali al Bashed as the Director of Educational Operations District 4 Directorate and Lilwa Ghassan Al-Mahana as the Director of Early Education Licensing and Follow-up Directorate. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 32 of 2021, appointing Dr Zainab al Tog as Director of Training Affairs for Engineering and Science Directorate at Bahrain Training Institute at the Ministry of Education. 
His Royal Highness also issued Edict 33 of 2021 to make the following appointments at Ashura and Representatives Councils. Amina Ibrahim Al Ahmed as the Director of Research and Legal Studies Directorate. Najid Ali Al Ashraf as the Director of the Legal Affairs Follow Up Directorate. And Ahmed Khalil Khalil as the Director of Mo Monitoring and Financial Follow Up Affairs Directorate. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 34 of 2021, appointing the following directorates at the Ministry of Finance and National Economy. Hala Hassan Abdullah at the Economic Indicators Directorate. Iman Jawad Al Ashfo as the Competitive Enhancement Directorate. Mohammed Ismail Al Hawassani as the Monitoring and Communications Directorate. Mohammed Abdullah Al Khabi at the Government Affairs Directorate. Iyad Abdul Latif Yosef at the Coordination and Joint Financial Affairs Directorate. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 35 of 2021, appointing two directors at the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority. Ahmed Yosef Taki is appointed Director of Projects and Institutions Directorate, and Mariam Ahmed Turani as the Director of Marketing and Promotion Directorate. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian and Working Youth Affairs and Honorary President of the Bahrain Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the participation of the Royal Endurance Team in the Jordan World Endurance Championship aims to highlight the advanced level reached by the endurance sport in Bahrain. His Highness indicated that the Royal Endurance Team's participation with junior jockeys in the Jordan World Endurance Championship, including 120 km and 100 km races, as part of the preparations for the upcoming World Championships, including the one to be held in the Netherlands. Sheikh Nasser asserted that the endurance sport in Bahrain has made major strides thanks to the unwavering support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, noting that the royal support has contributed significantly to the successful participation of the Royal Endurance Team in various external gatherings in which they attained distinguished results. He added that Bahrain's participation in the Jordan World Endurance Championship reflects the depth of relations between the two kingdoms across various fields, including sport. His Highness Sheikh Nasser wished the 18 Bahraini jockeys participating in the event success in attaining positive results. The Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs held its ordinary meeting and was headed by its Chairman Deputy Prime Minister Jawad al rayyad as the meeting discussed various laws, treaties, memoranda and decisions that it has studied, including those that have been submitted by the Legislative Authority. The committee also studies a number of recommendations to the Government and prepared the appropriate responses. Delegated by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Education and the Board of Trustees Chairman of the Higher Education Council, Dr Majid bin Ali al Nawemi, participated in the second organisation of Islamic Cooperation, the OIC Summit on Science and Technology. During his speech, the Minister conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and his interest in boosting cooperation between the Islamic countries, mainly in the fields of science and technology. He affirmed the King's appreciation of the participating in the summit, which aims to promote Islamic work, by boosting the role of science and technology. He underlined Bahrain's support to the international efforts in the environment, climate, health and food security fields. The Education Minister highlighted Bahrain's efforts to achieve progress in the scientific and technological field by switching to the digital empowerment phase, the production of the digital content and expansion in using the advanced digital education technologies. In the concluding communique, the participants underscored the need for cooperation between the member states to exchange experiences and boost the youth's skills so as to meet the requirements of the labour market. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and Chairman of the current session of the GCC Ministerial Council, Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziyani, chaired the meeting of the 148th session of the GCC Ministerial Council, which was held in Riyadh. The meeting was in the presence of the GCC Ministers of Foreign Affairs and with the participation of the GCC Secretary General, Dr Naev Al Hajraf. Minister Al Ziani congratulated the GCC country's leaders and citizens on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of the Joint Gulf Action. He added that the outstanding GCC achievements and said that the challenges facing the region cast a shadow over the course of Gulf cooperation. 
He added that the Palestinian cause remains a major issue, requiring member states to cooperate with the Palestinian Authority in order to alleviate the suffering of the Palestinian people and to support the legitimate rights, as per the Arab Peace Initiative and the international law. He expressed appreciation for the initiative of Saudi Arabia for a ceasefire in Yemen and expressed solidarity with it. He also addressed terrorism and the need to combat it, adding the importance of working to confront foreign interference in the internal affairs of Arab countries, as it is a clear violation of international laws. He praised the sincere efforts made by the member states, ministries and health and relevant agencies to confront the repercussions of the coronavirus pandemic. The foreign minister also commended the efforts of the Secretariat General. The Council discussed issues related to dialogues and strategic relations between the GCC and international countries and blocs, in addition to the latest regional and international developments. The infectious disease consultant and microbiologist at BDF Hospital, a member of the National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Manaf al Qatani, has stressed the importance of taking vaccines at this important stage of dealing with the virus in order to get protected against the complications and new mutations. He indicated that the COVID Delta variant poses an increasing danger to all age groups, especially children noting that the vaccination is the best way to protect against it, as this will increase the number of antibodies, strengthen children's immune system and provide them with the necessary protection from the virus. Dr al Qatani explained that the remarkable spike in the number of active cases over the past period include active cases of unvaccinated children, calling on parents of citizens and residents to register the children, aged between 12 and 17, for the vaccine. He added that this age group represents a large segment of society and a vaccination contributes to enhancing their immunity and that of the community, especially in light of the long incubation period of the virus in infected children. He pointed out that the vaccine is not dangerous to the 12 to 17 age group, adding that the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA and the Centre for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, strongly recommended this age group to take the vaccine to reduce complications or deaths as a result of the infection of the virus. He called on everyone to continue to adhere to the precautionary measures as well. <coughs> Bahrain's National Health Regulatory Authority, the NHRA, has approved a regin cov 2 for emergency use, a new drug by Regeneron in collaboration with F. Hoffman La Roche for mild to moderate treatment of COVID-19 cases. Regencove 2 contains a combination of casavarimab and indivimab, which are drugs called monoclonal antibodies that are designed to block viral attachment and entry into human cells to neutralise the virus. Regencove 2 also received emergency use approval from the US FDA to treat mild to moderate symptoms of COVID-19 in non-hospitalised adults and adolescents of 12 years of age and older who weigh at least 40 kilograms and for those who are at high risk of developing severe COVID-19 symptoms or of hospitalisation. Regencove 2 also received a positive review from the European Medicines Agency after the analysis of the quality, safety and efficacy aspects of the new combination. This drug has been added to the list of approved drugs by the Kingdom for the treatment of COVID-19 using antibody testing technology. The approval reflects the Kingdom's commitment to provide the latest COVID-19 medicines and treatments for all, which would prevent severity of active cases and reduce the risk to enter intensive care. The vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,034,974 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 876,102 had taken the second. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 10,566, with 1,636 recoveries, 620 registered new cases and 13 deaths. 304 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 316 are contacts of active cases and no travel cases. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.